Alrighty, welcome to the first episode of Chipmunk's Garage. Today we're going to be doing a how-to video on how to rebuild a Volkswagen Mark 1 AC blower motor and make this thing serviceable so if I ever have a problem with it in the future I can pull it apart, replace some parts, and get it going again because this thing is no longer available on planet Earth. If anybody finds them making them out in outer space, let me know. That'd be nice. Uh, so you can find some forms down in the interwebs. Uh, I found one on VW Vortex that tells you that you can service the rear bearing or bushing on this actually. And, but the front is not inserviceable. However, my issue was in the front. We'll get to that in a little bit. First, I'm gonna show you how to get this rear casing off this one came out of my 1981 Volkswagen Rabbit. It started going bad because the bushing was wearing out in the front. To get the back off, kind of similar to the front, except for the front, like I said, we'll get to that. It's a little bit more of a pain in the butt. But if you look here, you can kind of see there's these wedges. It's wedged over on each one of these points. You gotta punch those wedges back. <clears throat> Be careful not to damage them too bad because you're gonna need to punch them back to hold it back on. Once you punch those wedges back, you can take the little screwdriver here and pop this back case off. And this will separate this back end case off of here. This case is what houses your bushing in here. See that bushing in there? It's not a bearing, it's a bushing. Things about the rear that you need to know about, you need to make sure that you have your spacers, and on here there's a fabric or composite spacer. That's to make it so the armature doesn't actually come in contact with anything metal. Now, when you take the brushes out, you can tell about how much life you got left in your brushes because you'll be able to see how much they pop out. And that's quite a bit of life left in those brushes. And now we can take our brushes off <coughs> and we. So, this is the part where the brushes actually contact and make it so the power can transfer from one point to another to be able to rotate this assembly. <coughs> this one's got plenty of meat left on it. Probably going to take a little bit of emery cloth to it and clean it up. Now, back to the task at hand. Since my brushes and my stator are all good, the issue that I had was the front bushing on this got so wallered out, you can kind of see there, that it um, was making a hell of a racket, did a little bit of damage to the brushes, but not enough for me to worry about. But I needed to replace this bushing, which was in the front case, which is even harder to get to. So the way these bushings work is sits in here in this cage. It's got a felt washer and a spring retainer. This felt washer here sits inside of this case, kind of like this. This one's a little stretched out because I was playing with it. Then your retainer sits in there like that. The bushing sits in here. And this other bushing goes on the outside. Then this would mount into the back of this case like this. How you get this apart is you have to drill out these rivets here. It's not lined up right there, but there. There's rivets here, 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 and here. I had to drill those out to be able to get this to separate so I can replace this bushing. Now what I'm going to be doing to try and replace this bushing 
is since I don't have the capabilities to create a new bushing, I'm going to try and utilize a skateboard bearing. This is a 8mm internal bore, 22mm outside diameter by 7mm thickness, class th C3 bearing. So it should hopefully be able to hold up to the motor speeds and anything this thing can throw at it. But the other thing is, I'm making this so I can replace it. Now to get to that front bearing, you have to pull the whole hamster cage off of here. Giant wheel, looks like a hamster cage. Or a hamster wheel, my bad. But I had to drill a hole in the tip of my shaft and then get a punch that fit in there and beat the living butterscotch out of this thing. I'll just say that. And then I thought I was going to break it during that whole process. But eventually it came off. Might not come off so easily for others and it might break for others. I can't guarantee that it's going to come off easy for you or it's not going to break. But quick insert when removing the hamster cage or hamster wheel, utilize two blocks of wood underneath the wheel to hopefully help give it a little bit of stability instead of smacking it up against something metal. The wood will take a little bit of the impact, it might not break the wheel. Alright, back to what we were doing. This is a last ditch effort because, like I said, this thing is no longer available on planet Earth and I really like my Volkswagen. So, it'd be nice to have my windscreen blower back again. With that being said, since I was able to get the hamster wheel off by beating the shaft, then I was able to punch back the little punches and pull the front bearing off. Drilled out the rivets, pulled the bushing and bearing assembly out. Now what I'm going to do is I had this measured and it's about <clears throat> a 23 millimeter outer diameter inside of here and a 6 millimeter depth. So these bearings are just a little bit too thick but it's what you can get because the actual correct size bearings I dug and dug and dug unavailable. What I did is I went ahead and I got, I actually had this laying around from some other little projects that I do. This is 0.41 millimeter thick strip copper, or not copper, but brass. I utilized this to create a spacer ring for this bearing. Now I'm able to take this bearing, put it in here, and it sits fairly well, fairly tight, and fairly centered and snug. It's going to be the best that I can do, because it's the only option I have at this point in time. Now, with this all set in here, I can put this all back together and get to putting the motor back together. What I'm using to remount this to the casing is going to be some RC hardware that I actually had laying around for my RC drift car, which is kind of cool that these things are kind of interchangeable and not necessarily interchangeable, but it's kind of cool what things you can use from others to fix things that you never thought would happen. But I'm going to go ahead and just assemble this, probably turn this into a montage. Now what I used is I got these three by eight millimeter button head or hex drive Traxxas screws. They fit perfectly with some small nylock nuts for the same style nuts and a little bit of a washer here. These are number four washers provided by Dubro. I got all my little parts of the local hobby shop. And I can put these washers on here, 
these little nylock nuts tighten everything up and get ready to put it all back together and see what happens Okay, now that that's all assembled, I can see the bushing doesn't necessarily stick out as far, but hopefully since this is a roller bearing, it will be strong enough to be able to withstand this for at least a couple years. If not, I pull it apart, put it back together. I got a whole pack of 10 of these things for like 10 bucks. Um, and supposedly they're high quality. I looked at the reviews. I don't know. This is kind of a guessing game when we do this kind of um, now that that's there, part of the issue that I had, since this was flared out, they punched it, flared out to get the hamster wheel to stick on there. So it's going to be a little bit of a pain to get this bearing going here easily and nicely. I'm going to pull, since I have it completely disassembled still, I'm going to pull my rotor assembly out. gonna set my washers down so I don't lose them there's two metal washers and then one of the like like I said it's a composite material so you don't transfer electricity from here into the case and then I'm gonna go and try and see if I can get this thing to go on here nicely if I can we're in good shape what was I gonna use where did it go Now that I've got it kind of started, a little nice to the bearing, I'm going to use a socket. Punch that on the shaft. So I didn't want to take away all of the taper on this so the wheel still somewhat fits on there somewhat nicely. But now that. It's beautifully. We'll see how it works. Now that I've got that bit on there, I'm going to stuff this in back in here. Stuff that back in there. Kind of pulls itself in. You got to be careful. Don't pinch your fingers. Uh, yeah. Give this a good old tap tap on there. A little tap tap. Sorry, I don't have a hammer right now. My hammer's at work. Yeah. And so how the normal bearings are lubricated is those felt pads, they use a thick oil on them. So if all your bearings are good, you don't have to pull, do this all and pull everything apart. You just need to get it off out of your car. As long as they're free and in good shape, you can take some oil. I used 90 weight and dripped it onto the bearing face here on the front and the back since I had it apart and got that felt pad to soak in some oil so it would be lubricated again. Now there's people say since you can't get the front off of these, you just drip oil down the shaft and hopefully it'll get onto that bushing for you. 
but if that worked very well, we wouldn't be in here. So I've already been in here and lubricated the front, the rear bearing and tried doing that to the front bearing. Didn't uh, work, obviously. So it took about a year and a half, but it, it finally decided to go out the rest of the way. Now uh, we've got our washers on there. We can take our brush assembly and kind of lightly set it in here, somewhere where we want to go. Now we can take, careful with your brushes, these are really soft. And just lightly push them back to get around that stator. I was just easier a minute ago. Oh, because camera wasn't on, that's why. Everything's easier when the camera's not rolling. So, I I've got those on there. Push them up there. Alright, now that we've got it all back together. I'm sure our washers are on there, All right? We can put our bearing end cap on. I didn't replace this one because, I mean, 40 years of service and it's still in grade A condition right now, so. Let's see. Now what I was doing there is I had these couple extra little spacers floating around. They were from the skateboard bearings that I was using for sizing everything up, make sure I was getting the right bearing. And I just wanted to make sure this in play wasn't enough for it to just do any damage in there. So it's got quite a bit of in play. I don't remember seeing any bushings on this end, but I think that it'll hopefully be fine. We'll find out. Come tomorrow, we're going to go and see if we can figure out a way to get this shaft on here. Or not the shaft, the hamster cage. Thinking about maybe drilling it and putting a lock, walk, like another one of these bolts, a little bit longer one. So to lock it onto the shaft instead of having to flare it back out. So in case I do have to take it off and do it again, I don't risk the chance of damaging the wheel, blah, 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 blah. And hopefully it all comes out nice and fine and dandy. And then when I get to the shop, I can pin over the edges, fire it up and take it. Skip for a test spin, buddy. See how she does. Hopefully uh, does pretty good. Should be nice to uh, a little bit more heat. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow in a little bit here. All right, so we're at the shop now. Got it all set up on the test bench, and it seems to be working nicely. No super bad vibrations or anything. A little noisy in the brush area, but I think it'll survive. So now I'm going to punch these tabs back closed, so this will actually hold itself closed. Like this, take a little punch, line it up with the notch, give it a little tappy tap.
And we're gonna go around and do that for all these little tabs. Alright, now that those are all pinned over, you flip it over and do the other side. Alright, so now I'm tapping on the hamster wheel. Down below, I have a bolt or a socket on the shaft. So it's holding the center of the shaft so I'm not just punching on these bushing or uh, bearings or the brushes. Block, piece of block of wood and a hammer, tap it on there, and uh, I might end up trying to drill and nut this on there just for safety, but that seems like it's pretty freaking tight on there. I'm gonna fire it up here and see what happens. Alright, now that we got the hamster wheel back on there, I'm gonna fire this thing up, see if it tries to spin this wheel off of here. Maybe I'll just peen the shaft over a little bit more on the tip where I had punched it out. Or if it's fine, make sure it's not wobbling, making any horrible noises. See what happens. Woo! That's a fan. Looks fairly stable to me. Nothing's hitting, the bolts are in the perfect little spot, man. That is beautiful. I am ecstatic right now. I need to have a blower motor back in my Volkswagen, man. So I've cleaned up the wind tray area where I'm going to be putting the blower motor back in. I had to give it a nice little clean. I think I'm going to go over the mounting surfaces with a little bit of brake clean and a rag. Just clean them up a little bit more. Then I can slap the motor in there and start getting putting back together. Alrighty, now we got it all cleaned up and put back in there. Now these are held in here. There's a little clip you can kind of see it back here. That little clip holds the back end in and then that screw down there holds the rest of it in pretty sturdy in there. Nothing's wobbling or anything like that. Let's fire up and see how she eats. I think it's gonna work. Now that we've got that back in there, we just gotta put the shielding back in. This guy here, and that big old guy right there, that one goes first. Then the little one right there. Once we get those back in there and tighten down, we can uh, go to town, baby. Gonna take a little bit of butyl tape and 
put it around here for a new ceiling edge. Same thing with the big one. Um, we'll see you guys once I get that all put back in there. The way that these shieldings are mounted in is there's a screw there, screw there, actually bolts there really, and then a screw all the way back in the corner. There it is right there. Those are the three points that hold that whole housing down, the big one. These two have nuts on the back side. So they're a little bit of a pain in the butt to do one person, but jam a screwdriver or a wrench in there on the inside of the cab and you should be able to knock them out. All right, now if you're trying to find those bolts for the vents, there's on the passenger side two for the small housing vent thing up there, right? And if we look back here, we'll see a little bit further back towards the gear case, if I can get it to zoom in. That's one of the bolts for the big case, okay? Back over there by the heater case. And then there, if it'll go on the other side there, that bolt, is that small hole in the back that I showed you. It's just a screw. And then there's one more on the driver's side. that hold those housings in the ring tray are. All right, now that we've got the blower motor installed, everything's back in one piece. It seems to be working great and I got it all sealed back up. I figured I'd give you guys a little sneak peek at the rabbit, little bun bun we've been working on, if I don't fall over here. That's my girl. I've had her since about 2011. And, uh, she's a fun little thing. Sounds great. Runs great. It's got a 1.6 turbo diesel out of a Jetta. 91 Jetta. She's an 81 herself. Well, that's my baby girl. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope this has helped people out. Maybe uh, if anybody else ever needs to do this again, we'll uh, have a little bit of uh, details there for you so you can actually get her all nice and done. Oh my God, that's so nice. I actually have that working. Alrighty, thank you guys again. And if this was helpful, like, subscribe. Maybe I'll come out with some more content like this.